Okay, hey everybody, it's MathMark again. For some reason that I do not comprehend, my last math video is one of my highest performing videos of all time. So here we are again, making another math video, and this one is going to be about rolling averages. At some time in the past, I actually complained about the lack of rolling averages in the YouTube Analytics tab, and I realized when I did that, a lot of people don't actually know what a rolling average is. So let's talk about rolling averages, averages, other ways to visualize data, and why I want YouTube to add rolling averages to YouTube Analytics. So to do that, we're going to look at some of my YouTube data. Specifically, we're going to look at this chart, which is the views on my channel by day for the entire existence of the channel, going back to February of 2021. So the first thing you notice is that this is some noisy data. Uh, and why is it so noisy? Well, I release videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Most of the views I get are on those two days. So it's this lumpy, zigzaggy line. It's really hard to pick anything out in terms of what's going on. You can see some things, like you can see the days when I had incredibly popular videos. Here, right here, is where the Bioware Magic video came out and it kind of made my channel go crazy for a little while. But overall, it's hard to see what's going on in terms of broader trends. It lets you see what is going on with specifics, but not with generalities, not draw these larger conclusions. And that's the thing with data visualizations is usually some forms of data visualization are going to be useful for some purposes and others are going to be useful for different purposes. So we can start here and then using the other visualizations that YouTube gives us, let's take a look at some other things. Well, it gives two other primary ways to look at this data. We can look at it weekly or we can look at it monthly. So if I turn on those two, I've, what I've done is I've taken that data and I've divided it out by the number of days in the particular unit. So when we're looking at weekly, that is the red line. And when we look at it monthly, that's the yellow line. But what we've done is we've divided the, the each point on the red line by seven to make it essentially an average of each day on the week. And the yellow is divided by the number of days in the month in question. So what I'll actually do right now is point out that because the data, the daily data is so spiky, it's actually kind of hard to see what's going on with the, the weekly and the monthly data at all. So what I'll just quickly do is turn off the daily data. And what you see is you see that these don't really seem to line up, do they? It's especially here where we're in the area where the Bioware Magic video comes out, the monthly data seems to indicate that things went up much earlier than the weekly data indicates. And why is that? Well, fairly obviously, the reason is, is that video came out in the middle of January, but the monthly data is averaging all of January out. So it's actually missing the fact that this happened in the middle of the month. It's making it hard to pick out specifically what's going on. So you're getting this kind of aggregate idea but it's hard to really see specifically what's going on. I don't really like these large averages because it's really chunked up. What you're doing is you're sacrificing a ton of resolution by going from daily to weekly and then even more when you go to monthly. And this is where a rolling average comes in. So with a rolling average, what you're doing is you're starting with a specific day going back X days and adding up those days divided by the by x. So a seven day rolling average, you start on Monday, you go back seven days, and then add that up, divide by seven. Then when you move to Tuesday, you go back seven days from Tuesday. So each day you're adding one new day and removing one day. So what this does is it takes the daily data and it smooths it out a lot so that you can see what's happening with very spiky data. But because the new data comes in immediately as soon as it occurs, you will see that the influence of a big event is visible immediately 
as opposed to being sort of shoved to the edge of whichever unit of measurement you're doing monthly or weekly or what have you. So if I turn on the, uh, a, the seven day rolling average onto this data, so you can see here that it spikes up even later than the weekly data, because of course the video came out on a Tuesday. It didn't come out on a Sunday. So it catches the fact that there was something that happened at this point in January, but because it's rounding it out, what you can also see, which you couldn't see in the daily data, is you can see the trend of the overall channel. If I go back to overall data, it's really hard to see, like, are the average views on the channel going up? There was a huge spike in January, that's obvious, but what's going on overall on the channel? You can kind of squint at it and think, well, maybe the average views are going up. But when you go to the rolling seven days, it's quite a bit more obvious that average views have climbed. It's not a complete change of everything, but things are higher than they were. And this is why for me, I prefer rolling averages dramatically compared to just averaging by week or averaging by month. I do actually use the daily data quite a bit because for me, that provides just the instant precise data on what's going on right now or in a specific piece of time. But when I'm looking at trends, I find that looking at a rolling seven or a rolling 28 provides a better idea of what's going on. Uh, the rolling 28, if you look at it compared to the rolling seven, it becomes even more obvious what is going on with the channel overall. It's a little harder to pick out what happened when the Biomagic video came out right here, but you can see it, it's still there. It's just not as obvious what it did, but what it does let you see is it does let you see that yes, much more obviously again, average views on the channel have risen and we're now at a new baseline of performance. Let's just zoom in to try to illustrate my point of rolling averages over these weekly or monthly averages. So we'll zoom in here on just December of 2021 until end of February, 2022. So we capture this one period where the channel suddenly got a lot of additional views. And when you look at it like this, with just the views, again, it's sort of, you can see something's going on. The channel's kind of gotten all noisy all of a sudden. And you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna try to use one of my other views. I'm gonna use the monthly data to try to see what's going on. And what you see is this, has the channel just step functioned up to some brand new level where it's getting five times as many views as it was getting in December. That's what this data seems to indicate. And it seems like it started just on the beginning of the year. Has YouTube transformed itself into something new in 2022? But of course that's not what's happening at all. So you try a different view and look at the weekly view and it's telling you, okay, probably something happened in early January, but it's not really clear what's going on again. And this is why the rolling average is beneficial, because if you go and look at the rolling average, it becomes more obvious what's going on. There was an event that occurred here that pushed views up, and then they basically started to decline back down to some sort of new norm, a higher norm, a norm that was double what it was going on in, in December, but not five times. There was an anomaly, and that anomaly seems to have changed what was going on on the channel overall. Now, when you're doing rolling averages, it can be really important when you're picking that X, what is your, what is your number you're using? And you see a lot of rolling sevens, rolling 28s, and the reason for the, the these numbers is because we work with weeks, we work with 28 is four weeks, but different numbers can potentially skew your data quite a bit. If you are doing something where you have a, a periodic occurrence in your data and your rolling number doesn't line up with that, what happens is that sometimes your rolling data is going to include 
multiple occurrences. Let me try to unparse that really complicated sentence. If instead of a rolling seven, we do a rolling eight, then what happens? Then what happens is sometimes we're including two Tuesdays. So we get the data from two Tuesdays and a Thursday in, in the day. And sometimes we include like two Saturdays or something and we're not getting that doubled up data. So it causes the this artificial pulsing of the data that isn't representative of what's actually going on. So when you're doing a rolling average, it's important that you try to pick something that is in line with the frequency of the data that you're actually measuring. I did, couldn't actually come up with a really good chart because the, the data on my channel isn't so pulsy as to make it obvious what is going on, why I think this is something that is important to, to consider. You can see that these two lines don't line up, but it's not ne maybe necessarily obvious why that is. But for example, on Dragon Age Inquisition, if you were to use a rolling eight or rolling five is something that we actually did, what would happen is you would see that the data would drop off because on Friday, your rolling five is including Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, when most of the QA is in, most of the dev is in, so your bug filing rate is really high, your bug fixing rate is really high. Then on Monday, you're including five days again, but in that case, you're including Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday. So those two weekend days, even though you have people working, throws the data all way out of whack. So you do just have to be careful when you're doing a rolling view to make sure you think about what you're using for that period. Did I just spend uh, 10 minutes on a video explaining rolling averages in an, in an attempt to try to get YouTube to add this feature to their analytics page. Yes, that's exactly what I just did. But I guess we'll see. The last time I did MathMark video, as I mentioned, one of my most popular videos of all time. So if this one also is super popular, then maybe this is the math channel going forward. I guess we shall see. We have uh, merchandise now. This is the uh, file it all and let's triage sort it out. Uh, there's a link down in the description. As always, a special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link down in the description. In any case, are you enjoying MathMark? Because maybe this is an ongoing thing. What are some data views that you've used to help you understand data that you work with in your day-to-day -day jobs? Let me know that down in the comments. I'm always looking for new ways to look at data. I find that data visualization is very useful for most people to understand what's going on with numbers. I will see you again soon. Thank you.